So, um, welcome everyone. Um, there may be a couple more people wanting to join over the next few minutes, I'll let them in one by one. Um, so welcome to our third Bite Size Research webinar uh, with Professor Alison Gartland from the University of Sheffield. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, so for the next hour, again, you've got myself, Matt, I'm the Head of Fundraising and Communications at the charity and I'm going to kind of boast and make sure we stick to time. Um, and I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Dr. Zoe Davison and Dr. Vicky Benida, um, who both work in our research team. And uh, throughout the course of this webinar, uh, Professor Gartland's going to give you a presentation um, on bone development and what can go wrong. That will be followed by a Q&A. So if you do have any questions whatsoever, please do use the, uh, the comments section and post your, your questions in there and we'll try and <laughs> we'll try and do as many as we possibly can do. If I could just ask you not to try and get into conversation on there because it can be quite distracting for some people. But any questions you have, we'll try and get through as many as we can. We had a really good session last week, so um, we really want you to get the most out of it. Obviously, if you have any questions afterwards, you can always email after. Um, and then after the Q&A, we've got a little bit of a quiz, which hopefully will work, but we'll tell you about that afterwards. Um, all you'll need for that is your mobile phone to hand. So if you have your mobile, try and have it to hand for what we've done there. So uh, that's it from me, other than to say this webinar is all about research. If anybody does have any questions about any kind of personal circumstances or treatment, I'm afraid this really isn't the format for that, but our support and information team are on hand and you can contact them at support at bcrt.org.uk. Um, Okay, so Ali, to hand over to you. Um, I'm not controlling the slides this week, so it's over to yourself if you want to take it away. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, I'm welcome everybody to my very small office here at home. Um, and so just to say I am at home and so hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, my internet will, will, will behave itself. And if it doesn't, then please everybody uh, tweet to or, or com complain to Virgin Media. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen now uh, and hopefully get the um, <coughs> the presentation up. Um, great to see so many of you uh, here. Uh, could see a few people, see uh, quite a few um, uh, co COVID haircuts going on. I'm suffering myself, so uh, can't wait for the uh, the old uh, hairdresser to open up. Okay. So hopefully you can see my slides. Matt, can you see my slides? Is everything okay? Thumbs up. Great stuff. Okay, so I've been charged with talking to you about bone development and uh, what can go wrong. Um, I hope I'm going to do that, but um, what I'm going to do is, is basically this is going to be the structure of the talk. So I'm going to talk about them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Um, so to try and convince you, actually, something that I always tell um, the medics in, in, that I teach in, in Sheffield is that uh, your bones and your skeleton is the most important organ in your body. Forget your brain, forget your heart, it's your bones. And hopefully we can, can convince you of that um, by the end of, uh, of this hour. Going to touch a little bit on the origins of bones um, and then how bones grow um, and also turn over. And then in order to do that and to sort of put a bit of context, hopefully to some of the talks that you'll be getting later on in this series, we're going to talk about bone cells, um, what they are, what they do, um, and then a little bit about what um, bones gone wrong um, and sort of some of the things that uh, Daryl, Dr. Green actually touched on last week. Then we'll finish up, as Matt said, with a Q and A, and I'll I'll do my best to answer any of the questions, um, and then we'll have a little test afterwards. Okay, so then bones, then bones. Most of the time, when people think of a skeleton, um, they actually think of you know these things that are dug up in Time Team or you know that you see in the museums and different things like this. And people don't really give any any sort of second second opinion to bones and they think that it's you know once you've got your skeleton that's it that's all that you have but actually your skeleton as I say I think is is the the most important organ in your body and that's because it's got a number a number of uh, of, um, of functions and roles the first one is it it raises us up from the ground and against gravity 
if we didn't have our skeleton, if we didn't have the scaffold, then we'd all just be this big blob of skin and in my case probably fat and maybe in devil's case a lot of muscle uh, on you know on the ground so it basically raises us up and uh, gets us up off, off the ground and against gravity it also determines our basic body shape so your face is actually the way it is because of the bone structure underneath you guys might have seen some like um csi or again some of these fancy things where they actually find a skull and they can recreate the whole entire face based solely on the skull and that's because your as i say your your bones determine your basic body shape so they determine how big you are they determine that we look like we do that a human is in the form that it is and not you know in the form of, of a dog for example it also transmits your body weight so if you didn't have these um you know these the scaffold almost to transmit uh, your body weight around you wouldn't be able to get anywhere it also forms levers so a, a lot of lever systems so we have movement we can move our arms we can move our legs you know back in evolution we can run away from predators um, i guess we can still do that today uh, hopefully not as much um, and then also what it does is it actually prevent, protects the vital structures from damage so yes you get your, your your brain is important yes your heart is important but your skeleton's more important because if that wasn't there every time you'd knock your head against the, the wall or whatever then you'd probably be, end up being brain dead before the end of the week you know playing football no heading um, it also houses bone marrow, um, so your blood cells and, and all of them different different cells that go around your, your body. And then also it's a, it's a storage centre. It's, really, um, it's really dynamic in that way. So it stores calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and also it just stores it for when, um, when dietary stress strikes, if you like. So even if you're, you know, if you, if you are hungry or if you're not hungry, if, you, if you're starving, um, a dietary load, uh, also in, in the different, um, different uh, seasons as well, we can, we can leach some stuff out of our, 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 our skeleton. And also during pregnancy. So it's amazing, you know, when, when, um, when women are carrying babies, the baby will almost leach all, you know, a lot of the calcium out of the uh, the mother's bones uh, because obviously the, the baby has to grow grow its own skeleton. So it's a really dynamic. It's not static. It's dynamic. It's an it's an amazing organ, and it's the most important organ in the body. And when we think of it, we we can classify bones. So there's lots of different types of bones. So again, people might just think, oh, it's a bone. Hmm? No. There's lots of different types of bones. So if you think of it from the whole level, if you think of it from the skeleton, then we've actually got two types of skeletons. We've got something called the appendicular skeleton, um, which is over here on, on the left hand side. 126 bones make up the appendicular skeleton. Might want to remember that. Um, and that's what these bones are here. And so it's the apex, all, all of the, 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 the bones are on the apex. The other type of skeleton we've got is the axial skeleton. So again, um, the bones that are down the axis of your body um, is the axial skeleton. And there's about 80 bones that make up the axial skeleton. Osteologists are really, really good with naming things. They're very, you know, let's think about this. Let's, let's come up with a, a, a nifty name for things. Axial and pendant. We'll come back to that because bones are actually also described by their shape. So there's not just one type of bone based on shape, there's actually four or maybe five based on shape. Um, again, uh, the osteologists love the, the descriptive uh, names. So we have long bones. So uh, as you can see here, this is a long bone. These are long bones, but these are actually long bones as well. The bones in, in your fingers and, and in your toes. And that's because they're these tubular shapes with a hollow shaft uh, and they have these flared ends that articulate uh, with other bones. Then we have something called short bones. So in the in your hands, you've got short bones. And again, in your feet, you've got short bones and they tend to be cuboidal in shape. Uh, another really you know, great name for a bone, a flat bone. Can anyone know what a flat bone looks like? It's flat, right? So generally it tends to be curved as well. So your skull bone is flat, your ribs are flat, uh, you know, scapulas and, and, and the pelvic is, is flat as well. And they often uh, serve a, a, a protective function. 
And then finally we got, well, kind of finally, we've got irregular bones. So um, funnily enough, they are various shapes. So they're not regular, they're irregular. Um, and these are things like your vertebrae, and um, the mad little uh, bones that you've got in your ears and different things like that. Some people say that um, sesamoid bones actually make up the irregular bones. Um, and sesamoid bones are these round oval nodules that Oh no, <laughs> I think technology is failing us a little bit. I think Ali's uh, signal going a little bit. Vicky, I can see you. Can you hear Ali? You can hear Ali. You can't know. Okay. No, I, I, I can't hear. I, can, I see Ali frozen, but nothing else. Oh, okay. If you just bear with us, guys. We'll just uh, get in touch. <laughs> Why don't you just take over, Matt? <laughs> oh, we've lost her entirely. Um, we did have a possibility. Uh, she did mention to me that her you see me? Had, had dropped out. Um, so hopefully we'll give her a moment and she'll be able to join back on um, in a few seconds. Back, she's back. She's back. back. Oh, she might have gone again. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, do you know, we were doing so well <laughs> with the other ones, we've been so lucky. Um, let's see. Okay, while Ali's trying to join, um, if anybody does have any sort of like questions that you want to put to Vicky or to Zoe for the Q&A session, maybe this is an opportunity to kind of get them in, into the comments section. Um, uh, also, for those of you that aren't aware, so next week um, the webinar is about immunotherapy, renewing sarcoma. So um, for that, we've got uh, Dr. Fiona Errington Mayers and Tyler Barr from the University of Leeds. So that'll be a really good talk. Um, and then the week after that, we have one um, by Professor Adrian Flanagan on uh, chondrosarcoma, and the week yeah. after. Oh no, sorry, <laughs> I missed one. It's uh, with Professor Robert Falconer, sorry, um, on osteosarcoma. Um, and the week after that is on chondrosarcoma. The week after that is chordoma. So uh, we've got some good talks lined up. Um, my question is, right, Ali is here. Hello. And she's back. Sorry, guys. Didn't we know that this was going to happen? Okay. Where did you get up to? <laughs> I've just been rambling on for the past 10 minutes. I'm only joking, I haven't. <laughs> this is Moid. We've all had ice cream, Ali. <laughs> Say that again? We've all had ice cream while you've been out. Ice cream? That's not on. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, can you see my screen again? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, so... Uh, um, why can't I actually control? Yeah, so we did the sesamoid. So basically what I was saying was that, so we can think about the skeleton in, in the bigger sense, um, the different types of bones, the different shapes of bones. And then actually within a bone itself, there is different types of bone within that bone. So the next time you have a, I don't know, a lamb shank or, or, or you know, some chicken or something like that, see if you can't split that bone open and have a look what's inside it. Because we can determine the types of bone structure um, at a macro level, so, so really what's visible to the eye. And what we've got here is it's a, it's a, a cut through um, in a micro CT um, of a, a tibia. Um, and what we've got up here is the, the epiphysis, is the top of the bone. And then we have this, this region here that we call the metaphysis. And then down the bottom, or, or not down the bottom, in the middle is called the diaphysis. And up at the top in the, uh, the metaphysis, we have a type of bone that's called trabecular bone. Sometimes it's called um, spongy bone or cancellous bone. The Americans tend to call it cancellous bone. Um, it's called spongy bone. As I say, these osteologists, they're really good with the names. It's called spongy bone because it looks a bit like sponge. Um, and like I say, you know, you can see this by eye. I took this photograph here um, 
on the on the right hand side just with my iphone um so this is the the, the structure and that's because there's a lot of bone marrow in there and then also it actually um transmits the weight so it's a bit like the um the flying buttresses on 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 cathedrals to transmit that weight and then actually if we go down to the metaphysis uh, to the diaphysis what you tend to find there is you get um what's called cortical bone and as you can see here, this white outline here, this cortical bone is very dense and compact. Um, and there's very little holes, not like the trabecular bone. It's very dense, dense and compact. You have a few holes and that's where the blood system goes through. So again, we can, you know, within one bone, there is lots of different structures and types of bone. Um, and then actually, so you can't see this by eye, you normally need to, to use a microscope. And, and in this case here, a, a special microscope, and we can see that um, in this instance, as you can see, there's these arrows that are sort of all going higgly piggly. This is, is a very disorganized type of bone. These are the collagen structures with inside bone, which is in uh, a type of bone called woven bone. Um, and that's laid down very, very quickly. It's very disorganized. And it's got no clear structure. Um, and this woven bone is generally replaced with lamella bone. Now lamella bone is made very slowly, it's more organised and it's got this layered structure. You might think that it reminds you of the, the layers of, um, of a tree um, and what these are here, so this is a zoomed up area of, of this part of the bone um, and these are the, the sort of the rings that the bone as it's laid itself down and these sort of almost spider like structures here, this is, a, is an osteocyte well, I'll explain what they are in a bit with the caniculi, so the channels of um, uh, uh, the, the, the processes of the osteocyte talking to other osteocytes. And that's within the structure of the bone. It's very organized and very structured. So again, you know, within a very discrete area of a bone, you can have, you know, different types of bone. So cortical, um, trabecular, and then you can have this woven or lamella bone as well. And then bone is, is, is an amazing property, uh, material properties, because it's a, it's a composite. So in adult mammalian bone, you've got about 50 to 70% of the, of the bone structure is actually mineral. Um, and it's a mineral called hydroxyapatite, which is this crystalline form of calcium phosphate. Um, so as I say, you know, 50% of your bone is, is made up of calcium phosphate. So that's why it's important to have, uh, you know, a, a high, uh, a good intake of calcium in your diet. Then between 20 and 40% is made up of organic matrix, mainly collagen, mainly type one collagen. Um, and that's, you know, 90% of all of the protein in, in bone is, is collagen. And then 10% of the, the rest of it is, is uh, again, you know, a very well named non collagenous protein uh, makes up the rest of it. And then we have about five to 10% of, of your bone is actually made up of water. And what happens is these collagen fibers are arranged in such a way uh, that the mineral particles act and the crystals actually are situated within these uh, these collagens. And what this does is it actually gives bone its strength and its elasticity. And I think. You know, so if there's anyone out there who's ever, you know, built anything themselves with concrete or and, and, and different things like that, think reinforced concrete. So you've got, you know, the, the calcium. And if you just had, you know, concrete, a concrete block and you didn't have the steel girders in it, as soon as you jumped on that concrete block, it would break. And this is the same with your bones. So if your bones were just mainly calcium, as soon as you walk, they would break. So they've got that collagen there to give them a bit of elasticity uh, and, and strength as well, because actually collagen has got really, really high tensile strength. And this is just a, a, a sort of an illustration. I normally do a practical demonstration of this. So this is a fibula. Um, and it's got uh, the collagen parts with collagen molecules and, and, the, and the mineral particles as normal. And then what I did in the lab is I, I got rid of, I chemically got rid of all of the calcium. And then what you can actually do with that bone is you can tie it in a knot. So I physically tied that, that fibula in a knot, okay, because all of the calcium is there and it's just that. So as I say, for it to be, uh, you know, as good and as, as as strong as our bones are, it needs to be this composite. So the calcium, the minerals provide the stiffness, remember this, and the collagen provides the elasticity. So then if we go on to the origins of bone, so where did bone come from? Where, you know, in embryonic development, again, um, there are different origins of bone. 
and it's not it's not even just as simple as we've got the axial skeleton we've got the appendicular skeleton we can we can trace three lines back um in, within the emb embryonic development the first one comes from something called the cranial neural crest cells and this gives rise mainly to the flat bones of the skull the clavicle uh, and the cranial bones as well, but not all of them. So for example, the temporal bones and the occipital bones, they, they don't come from that, yet they're in the same, they're in the same place in your body. And then the somite um, uh, gives rise to the rest of the axial skeleton and the lateral place meets to them, your, your long bones, uh, so the, the appendicular skeleton actually grows from there. So the point of me telling you that is that even you know our bones have you know multiple um, multiple origins within the embryo and not all bones are the same once again once we've got the embryo and how the bow how our bones grow and get to be you know the, the the structure that they are the skeleton that's not um not straightforward and, and there isn't just one way of doing it either so basically in, in embryonic development everything everything starts out as this condensed mesenchyme uh, so lots of mesenchymal stem cells um, and what happens is um, we can get bone either by something called the intramembranous ossification route or we can get bone by the endochondral ossification route and so in the intramembranous, what happens is this condensed mesenchyme actually differentiates straight into to osteoblast. It, it, it goes from being like a jelly-like substance to a hardened bone. And it tends to be the flat bones, um, mainly the, of the face and skull and different, different things like this. And, and as I say, the, 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 bone, the bone cells actually differentiate and exist um, straight from this mesenchymal, uh, this mesenchymal origin. In endochondral bone formation, it's a different thing. What happens is these mesenchyme actually differentiate into, into chondrocytes, into a, um, a, 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 a cartilage analg, so like a scaffold, a jelly type scaffold. And then they grow and it goes bigger um, because the chondrocytes actually uh, proliferate and hypertrophy. And then over time, what happens is we get something that's called the primary ossification centre happens. And so ba bone basically starts to form mainly on this bony collar here. Um, and we get an influx of blood that brings in other stem cells that then naturally differentiate and, and we get osteoblasts in there. We get this bony collar happening. But these, uh, these chondrocytes still grow. They still keep on growing and keep on um, uh, undergoing hypertrophy as well. And then mineralizing this, this, uh, this cartilage. And so basically what happens is at either end of these long bones, the chondrocytes keep growing. And in the middle, the, 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 the bone collar starts to grow. So you can imagine that the, the ends of the bone um, go further and further away. And that's how, and so again, the point of this is even in, in how our bones are formed, they're not all the same, there's different origins. And this is uh, this whole growth, this lengthwise growth of our bone is illustrated here. So these are just um, bones of different, of different ages, so newborn. Um, so as you can see here, this will be the, the bony collar. Um, and um, this here, because there's a bit of a gap, that, is that would have been collagen, and this is collagen here. This coll and what you can see is that the, the ends of the bone, the secondary ossification centre, are starting to, to actually stay on the bone and fuse with the bone. Um, as the bone grows long, um, the, you've got this growth plate here in adolescence, and then by the time you, you hit adulthood, this growth plate, you can see this sort of line here, so that's the reminiscence of that chondrocyte hypertrophy um, pattern, eventually fuses and you stop growing in height. But it doesn't stop there. You, your bones don't just go, okay, I'm five foot four and a half, I, I like to say five foot five, but four and a half probably. So we don't just stop there. It's not that, you know, we stop growing so your bones are dead. Your bones continue to actually turn over and remodel um, all the time. And they reckon that you actually get rid of, well not get rid of, you turn over about 10% of your bone every year. So every 10 years you get a new skeleton. 
And it does it by a process called uh, either modeling or remodeling. So modeling is when we actually, we change the shape of the bone and that might be in a response to altered loading in some way. Um, that means that the bone needs to be, to be a different shape or it, um, it tends to be, and, and, and as we grow, so that would be modeling here. Um, but then when we want to maintain our bone, so once we've reached peak height, um, most of the bone is then remodeled. Um, and in order to, to describe remodeling, we have to think of it in a sort of a quantum way, um, or even like the, uh, the roads of Sheffield normally. So we start out with a nice flat, even surface road, um, everything's hunky-dory, everything's fine, um, but then something happens that means that we end up with a big pothole. So basically the osteoclasts have come along in the bone, there's something the matter with the bone, it might have a microfracture, or as I say, it might be times of dietary stress and the osteoclasts are activated and they will resorb bone and they'll take away bone leaving essentially a pit um, or a pothole and so these these osteoclasts are then told to go away because that's you know we don't want it any deep I have a feeling that Ali might be on a meter <laughs> <laughs> she keeps running down. Uh, let's just see if she reconnects. Um, let's message her. Okay. Yes, we've lost her. <laughs> and she's joining again. Sorry, guys. How embarrassing. Where did you get up to? Have I filled me potholes in you? You were just, you were just, you were doing it quicker than some councils in the country, that's for sure. Okay, so did you get that that goes round and that basically at any, one, at any one time in your body, there's three million of these little sites going on. So there's three million of these, um, these sort of, uh, these, these uh, remodeling uh, potholes going on in your, in your, in your body and that mean in, in your, in your skeleton, that means you will replace 10% of your skeleton in a year. Okay. So, uh, hello, wake up, come on. There we go. So, you notice when I was talking about that and when I was talking about how the bone grows and how the remodeling, I'd, I'd said some words about different different cell types. And some of you guys, and especially the, the scientists there, hopefully, Karen, I hope you know what a, an osteoclast is. Um, when, we t when we talk about the cells of bone, we talk about basically four different cell types. We talk about an osteoclast, and as I mentioned before, the osteoclast, which is sitting here on the surface of the bone. So this, this sort of pinky, blue purpley bit here is bone um, and these are osteoclasts and they've got lots of nuclei and they sit on the surface of the bone um, and they they resorb the bone the osteoblast so build bone blasts they actually uh, they'll sit on another surface of the bone and they deposit the bone the bone matrix there's a thing called an osteocyte and an osteocyte is basically an osteoblast that has been come entombed in bone as it's been laid down. Um, and years ago, they used to just think that they were, you know, they were just these entombed cells and they didn't really have anything to do or contribute. Um, but actually, we now believe that they are, you know, if you like the master regulators they control what's going on with, with, with bone in, in some instances um, and they are actually the most abundant bone cell in the body because you know there's there's millions of them entombed inside our bone and then we've also got something again called a bone lining cell which is kind of a um, again we used to think it was a lazy osteoblast so it just sort of gone to sleep and stuff um, but it's it again this is a it's a flattened cell that sits on the surface um, but it's very important as well in, in bone. We don't tend to think of bone cells in, as in these cells here. So these are the bone marrow cells. So these are these are blood cells, basically. So your bone houses the bone marrow, but they are not bone cells. So they won't give rise to bone apart from the stem cells that are in there. But that's that's, a, that's another thing. Um, so they are blood cells, adipocytes, and, and, and the, the, the stem cells reside in there. Um, and also your infl um, inflammatory cells. So 
Osteoblasts, so osteoblasts and osteoclasts, again, they don't come from the same place. So an osteoblast comes from a mesenchymal stem cell. And we know the factors, uh, the genes that are, have to be activated to send a mesenchymal stem cell down uh, what we call the lineage to, uh, to proliferate. Um, and get and, and at this stage it can give rise to a number of different cell types from a mesenchymal stem cell. But then we know the, the next set of genes that need to be activated for these cells to become an osteoblast. So RUNX2, Osterix and, and beta catenin. If these are switched on at the right times, we end up getting an osteoblast. And this process here from cells that differentiate uh, the proliferate to differentiation uh, to sorry to terminal um, terminal osteoblast is called differentiation. So osteoblasts, they are the bones that form, uh, sorry, the cells that form bone and they form it in, in this osteoid. They produce that collagen I was talking about earlier, you know, this, this fibrous strength, and they themselves, so here down here, they actually secrete and produce these, uh, deposit these hydroxyapatite crystals within that collagen. They have high alkaline phosphatase activity, so you might have heard measuring about alkaline phosphatase activity in, in, in blood and stuff. They make these non-collagenous proteins as well that sort of coordinate things, um, and as well they secrete factors that actually then talk to the osteoclasts. So the osteoclasts, they don't come from mesenchymal stem cells, they come from somewhere totally different. So they come from hemopoietic stem cells. And again, we know the factors that have to be, and the genes that have to be regulated, have to be turned on in order for these stem cells to go down the pathway that will eventually turn them into these uh, multinucleated, hungry eating uh, osteoclasts that resorb, uh, resorb the bone. And again, we know the, the genes that need to be switched on, we know the factors that need to be, need to be there, and, and actually factors that will block this, this process as well. And so osteoclasts, they, um, as I say, they're the ones that resorb bone. So they, they actually dissolve the mineral by, by secreting acid. Um, they also break the collagen down by secreting an enzyme. Um, and that's, that's illustrated here. So they have high levels of trap, um, which, is, uh, which is the enzyme, and uh, uh, sorry, the acid, and then also uh, cafepsin K, which will, which will be the enzyme. And this is just uh, some, some osteoclasts that we can grow in, in, the, in the office, <laughs> in the lab. Uh, and this is a picture from Shelley Lawson of some osteoclasts sitting on, on the surface of bone again. So, so that's, that's an overview of, of bone, and hopefully I convinced you that it's not just this static thing, and that it's, you know, it's complicated. They, they have different em embryonic um, origins. You get to the different types of bones in a different ossification way. There's different cell types. The different cell types come from different places, and you have to have different genes switched on for them. And so, you know, when the, all of this goes wrong, then, yeah, we can get, we can get cancer. Um, and uh, Dr. Green touched on this in his presentation uh, last week in that, if you remember, I showed you the picture where we had them, them bones that elongated and at the end of the bones, uh, the metaphysis, you're getting this, this turnover. And if you guys have got kids, you know that the, all of a sudden they can grow a couple of inches in, in no time at all. Um, and the amount of cells that have to be, have to uh, have to double, have to replicate in that period of time is, is phenomenal. And so this is called the cell cycle. Um, and as a cell uh, duplicates, so from one cell to two, it has to go through all of these stages in the cell cycle. And this is mitosis, which is the eventual um, uh, splitting of the, of the, of the DNA uh, to get two replicates. Um, and so basically in what we think that happens in, in, um, in cancer formation, and as uh, Dr. Green said last week, this sped up cell division causes cells to make DNA mistakes. So it could be that when this double check stage here happens, it's not checking it quickly enough. We're getting DNA uh, errors and that's taken forward um, and, and, and can lead to, to tumorigenesis. The other thing is that um, in your body, you have what's called um, checkpoint uh, inhibitors, I guess. So um, for a for a cell to go through the cell cycle, it's got to it's got to be it's got to be allowed to go through this. There's kind of like a traffic light system, if you like. Um, and 
we have tumor suppressors. So if it's going, if, if your cell cycle's going nuts, the tumor suppressors says, hang on, sorry, it's on red, you can't go into S. So G1, you can't go into S. And as last week we were talking about it, and, and some of you guys have said this as well, um, one of the genes uh, that that's gone, goes wrong in, in osteosarcoma, for example, is TP53, um, and that encodes for a protein called P53, which normally, if your if your cell has DNA damage, it will prevent that that damage from being duplicated. It will stop the cell from going into S phase, and it's the same with RB1 as well. That would actually stop that. And we know that in in certain types of well, in, in a certain percentage of osteosarcoma cases, these are missing, so they prevent this uh, this um, this checkpoint from happening. Um, and so if you go back to the normal differentiation of our osteoblasts, if this happens, if this goes wrong, so we don't get this proliferation to differentiation switch, what we get is we just get an overactive proliferation um, and, and the incorporation of errors in the DNA that means that we're going to get end up with, with tumour cells. Um, and so we don't get uh, these differentiation, we don't get the mature osteoblasts, we don't get osteoblasts. And so basically the cells get stuck in cell division and they can't differentiate. Um, and again, like we know certain steps in the actual process, we know that there are certain things that will cause, uh, that will halt these differentiation um, and will cause tumor cell growth and tumor genesis. So as I said before, loss of P53, loss of RB, uh, loss of P27, urine sarcoma, I saw that, um, uh, Sue's on this, so Lewin, so, Ewan sarcoma as well, and, and this prevents it in, um, sorry, the fusion protein that will prevent it in Ewan sarcoma, prevents differentiation. So all of these things are, uh, um, will contribute to, to, to the bone gone wrong, if you like. But by knowing these genes, by knowing these pathways, so by studying normal bone development, if you like, then we can actually think about pathways and the genes that are involved in their normal processes and whether or not we can target them to make uh, to make drug targets. So that's me and I'm hoping that that's tour de force has given you you know an appetite not necessarily for bone but an appetite for, for, for thinking about bone in a different way and for, for thinking it's as wonderful as, as I do and my, my dog does there um, and that you know you're not going to think about, it, about bone that it's just a static thing and also that it that it's not just a simple organ either it's a very very complicated organ um, as I say multiple lineages multiple types multiple uh, places and that's just in, in one bone um, so i hope that's given people a bit of an overview um, and also a foundation to you know when some of the other scientists are talking about their research going forward it might help for you to put things in, into content context a, a little bit better so that just leaves me to to thank a few people so obviously bone cancer research trust um you know i think you guys are amazing and and uh, thanks in uh, for for funding so um they funded this is this is luke tatsaw here they funded luke's uh, phd uh he is here thanks to the the guys in the lab um they always seem to 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 step up when when i i uh, I asked them to come on my um, my charity events with us. We also collaborate with uh, Joanne Thompson. She does social accountability with the undergraduate medical students as well. So some of you guys might have actually talked to our medical students, um, and we always end up doing you know doing some bake sales and stuff like that to uh, to raise from for you guys. Um, and then just finally, I know quite a lot of you guys are probably doing this already, but if you're not, maybe step up for bone cancer. Um, I'm stepping up for Maddie. Um, Maddie's back home now. She actually had her. Her, um, her left uh, leg amputated not uh, last week uh, actually and she was home on Wednesday so she's uh, one tough cookie um, so I'm stepping up for Maddie and, and I think I'm a bit over halfway there um, but that's it that's that's me and I'm happy to take any questions fab thank you Ali um, I, I'm bamboozled with that. I thought that was really, really good. So thank you. <laughs> Certainly learned a lot. Um, there's uh, a question from, uh, from Dr. Green, actually, uh, who's on. Um, have you seen any embryonic uh, pathways reactivated in osteosarcoma in your research? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
Daryl, we've had this conversation. I'm not an embryologist. I'm not a developmental biologist. <laughs> My simple answer is no, and I would probably throw it open to uh, Sue or, or Aggie, actually, might know, know better than me. Um, I, I, I can't think off the top of my head, to be honest with you. No, I, I, just a random question from me, actually. So many people that we come across at Boncaster Research Trust, many families will kind of say, you know, is it something that I did when my child got bone cancer or is it something to do with my DNA? Did I pass it on? Have I got bad bones? What would your response be to someone who would kind of ask that question? Have I got bad bones? Did you say no, 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 no. That? So like, if, if I was a parent of a child that had bone cancer, Many parents that we come across, they kind of sometimes wonder whether or not it was something that they did, or is it their bones that they've passed on, or you know what, you know, is it something that I've caused? What kind of would you say to them? Because obviously you, 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 know, you study bones, so you know that there's a lot that can go wrong. And what, what would you say to someone like that? Exactly. So I, I, I would just say, did you not just listen to me lecture? <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's so, you know, it's so complex and, and I guess when, when we were having the conversation last week and, you know, we were talking about testing, weren't we? And, and can you not just get tested for T, you know, for TP53, for example, or, or, or things. If you get tested for um, the, uh, the BRCA1 gene, you know what can go wrong with that is potentially you know you could get breast cancer and you could get ovarian cancer so you can take them organs out it, 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 worst case scenario what are you going to do with, with a skeleton i mean where because you have that genetic defect where in your skeleton do you think you're going to get that that cancer um for me it's uh, i think genetics is one thing but it's not you know it's not that it's not the hit and we know that there's only, I think, RB is only about 40% expressed in people who have osteosarcoma. Um, and just because you have it doesn't mean to say that you are going to get osteosarcoma. I think Daryl covered it really nice last, last week, the why me. I, I just wouldn't tie yourself up in a knot, personally, about it. It's, it is, and even osteosarcoma is so rare as well. It's... What we, well, actually, what we said to Mad Maddie, and she said she's very special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, and I know it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a lame answer, but it's not, you know. And what do you, you can't help your genes, can you? You can't not pass your genes on. You're passing no. it to, you know. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got a couple more questions that come in. So Richard Ellis has got two. First one, are there any external factors that trigger things to go wrong or is it just one of those things? So are there external factors? Yeah, so sorry, I, I, um, I meant to say that on the, on the slide. Um, so one of the slides where um, we had uh, from, a, from a mesenchymal stem cell and then you can get a hit and it, it causes a tumorigenesis. So for example, there's a... There's a and a, an ideology that it's, you've got to have several hits so if you have a um a gene defect and then you might have a, an external environmental hit so we know that um you know radiation does you would will cause dna damage as well that will lead to tumorigenesis and things like this um we spoke about this last week so if you've already got um a, another cancer or so a bone cancer you might be more um more likely to get um a primary bone cancer so you know you can get osteosarcoma secondary to uh, I think it's Paget's disease I think um, so there are other things but it's not as it's not as clear-cut as saying um, you know keep out of the sun um, because we know for sure that you know too much sun and getting burnt will 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 lead to melanoma um, it's not it's just not as clear-cut as that we can't we can't give you any answers for that I'm afraid I mean you know there's an, an association uh, between height um, and and how quickly someone grows and you know uh, having osteosarcoma but what what you know what are you going to do not everyone who's tall has osteosarcoma um, and you can't prevent people from from growing um there's another really good question actually um how long can tumor cells be forming into tumors before symptoms show up so is there any data on that how long they can be forming before symptoms start to present 
No, and and I think that um, I think we, you know, anecdotally from talking to, to some clinical colleagues, you know, it, you know, they can be they can have been around for, for sometimes for years um, before they actually cause cause any symptoms. Um, uh, but that's only anecdotally. Um, okay. I, don't, I, I don't know. Okay. Some some are really fast growing, and it depends upon the nature of the of the tumor as well. Um, so some of them will be fast growing, and you know they're there within I don't know. Let's say the switch is gone. That means that we're not under a normal proliferation anymore, and and then within like three four weeks you you have got a mass. Um, you know, but it's but sometimes they can be very very slow growing, and some some external factor might have then affected how it proliferates. Okay. Okay. Um, so Laura, who is a physio at ROH in Birmingham, she's asked, have, "Hey, Laura, have you uh, come across any research, and what are your thoughts on adverse childhood events and triggering the abnormal responses that then lead to bone cancers developing?" Adverse childhood events? Do you mean? Uh, does she mean like falls and things like that, or? Laura, want, I'm not clinical, to... so I don't know what an adverse childhood event is. <laughs> uh, Laura, if you um, want to just comment and uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, ACEs, um, there's been quite a bit of research about ACEs, so adverse childhood events that are sort of stress responses, so things like losing a parent, going through like a traumatic event that can then trigger off different responses that can lead to different kinds of illnesses later in life. Um, I just didn't know if you'd come across anything linked directly with bone tumours. No, haven't. I'm afraid. I mean, uh, like I say, why I asked that is because so some some people, you know, have thought that it, it was um, that you know injury, sporting injuries, and different things yeah. like that can can affect it. But it, it, there's no um, there's no di there's no causative. It's just a, it just tends to be an association because um, so for example. Um, I think Maddie. No, actually, what happened with Maddie? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, you know, they 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 fall, they injure themselves, they go to A and E, and then it's it's spotted because they're having an X ray. Um, so it's not uh, it's not that that injury has given them them a tumor. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Vicky, you have a question. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask? Uh, a question? Yes, I, I thought it, if, it's more the, um, if you could make a comment because you mentioned that of course when you have the proliferation you have an accumulation of, of tumor cells but then and so one strategy to treat tumors would be to prevent or stop that proliferation but then you mentioned something very interesting which is the differentiation so presumably if you could promote the cells from, to differentiate you could also you have a different strategy for treating tumors. So I wanted, I was wondering if you could comment on strategies that promote differentiation to treat bone tumors. So I guess you'd, the, the problem is you wouldn't want to promote uh, or, or try and get a, a tumor cell to differentiate though. Um, so they're, they're not normal osteoblasts, you know, they're not normal cells. It's, they've been hijacked and they're now tumor um, cells. So you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want them to differentiate um whether if you stimulate um stimulate the bone to to, mm. to form more bone whether that would prevent mm. the 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 tumor so there's there's something called a, a vicious cycle of bone and cancer um and cancer cells secrete factors that will affect mm. osteoclasts so you know it's, and, and they then secrete factors that affect the bone cells themselves and then they'll keep growing so it's not something I've come across, um, okay. to be honest with you. In other, in other sorts of situations, we, we do do that. So, for example, we've got a, pro a project ongoing in, in breast cancer. So to try and prevent uh, breast cancer metastasis, we want to see if we can actually stimulate yeah. bone, bone formation. Yeah, that's uh, what I was wondering. Yeah, but I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I don't know, Aggie or, or, or someone else might, okay. might have a different opinion, but I, I wouldn't know whether or not it would work with osteoblasts. Uh, osteosarcoma okay. because it is that osteoblasts that are going nuts okay. and going wrong anyway. Yeah. Are there any um, links um, between clusters of incidents of random and rock piles? Mm, Rosalind, I don't think so, no. Uh, no. 
There you go, that's answered yours, Ross. Um, and Andy uh, Lewis. Is it prevalent? Uh, yeah, I think it is, Andy. Uh, it's 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 just because there's so much activity going on at, at the you know in the bones at that time. I think. Uh, okay, so just because so people watching this back won't see the question. So the question is: Is so bone cancer in teenagers due to the fact that they are going through more rapid growth? Oh, you believe oh, it is, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I just hit play on the thingy. Um, no, I, 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 yeah, I think it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so thank you for everyone for your questions and we hope you liked uh, the presentation. Obviously, if you think of any questions afterwards, you can send them to us on email back to the email address where you've been sent the invitation and the link. Um, but Ali is now going to do a little bit of a fun quiz, which is the first for us on these uh, webinars. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to work. So this is where everybody needs the, the phone, which is hopefully separate to what you're watching this webinar on. So yeah, so, so hopefully, so if you haven't got a phone and you're just on your laptop, just get two, um, two web browsers open. So you, you need to be able to see me still, because I'm going to share with you the questions in a minute. And then you can either answer the questions on your phone, in a, in a web browser on your phone, or if you've only got your laptop, you can have another web browser and you can use that to answer the questions. So basically in a separate web browser, go to Kahoot, um, so K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Okay, um, and let me see. and it should ask you to put a pin in. So I'm going to apologise for the noise, the, the music already, but it's funny now. Okay, uh, aiming for okay. something like this, everyone. Yep. And then the number that you want to enter is nine three four zero nine one nine so i'll put it in the chat for everybody and hopefully tell me if you can see this man yeah. and i love the music can you hear the music yeah how many have we got locked on here, Matt? 42, we've lost a couple. <laughs> So look at the screen and here's the quiz. And you get 20 seconds to answer and you've got to answer where you see that, that four sorts of things. So we're going to try it. Where is home cancer research HQ located? Is it home there, Huddersfield, Ross there, or Lee? So that so that's how it's going to work. Okay, is that okay? Can we have a thumbs up in the chat if everyone understands that's what it's going to be? Is everyone yeah okay? We do. Thanks. Ali, just turn the music down on the quiz though. It's it's really quite loud and can't hear you ask the question. Let me. Uh, I like the music. It's just really loud. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so let's see. So now is the real questions, and so just to get the, get this. So what happens is. Um, everyone gets points for getting it right, 
but actually you get more points the quicker you get it right. Okay, and we've got a we've got a leaderboard. So clear was the click quickest to get that answer right. I'm surprised that none of the BCRT team didn't get that answer right instantly. Come okay. on, guys. You know? so, there's always one, but I have to admit. <laughs> Oh, well, you've got to listen and look at the questions because uh -huh. these are proper, these are proper, um, what's it called? Uh, these are proper multiple choice questions. So there's a couple that might throw you in there. Okay. So here we go. So the next one. So what type of bone is this? And you're looking for the green on the skeleton. So is it a flat bone, a long bone, a sesamoid bone, or an irregular bone? majority of the people were, 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 were listening the couple that, that, that either uh, are having a laugh or, or they, they they may not have heard that bit at the bottom so um so this one is a flat bone okay so it's flat but it okay it's curved but it, it is flat um so let's see what that's done to the to the leaderboard okay come on claire are you still there whoa claire's good on these clicking so claire's claire's still at the top but we've got someone called Faye who's come come screaming up in second place. Tim's third, and then we've got VV that I'm I'm guessing is Vicky. So she's in third place, and then we've got Jay uh, at the bottom of the leaderboard there. Okay, so remember you've got to get it in quick. That's where you're going to get all your your points from. Okay, so next question, Matt, how's the volume? It's still a little loud, but it's okay. We can read the question. Is everyone else bothered by the the the? the... Let me uh, let me actually. Uh, let me take that off and let's see what that's like. Okay, next one. So forget, don't forget, right? So they're all in the same order. Okay, next one. So, okay. How many bones are there in the adult body? 226, 209, 206, or 306? You've got 10 seconds left. Music. I love the music. <laughs> great, great. Okay, nice one. So people can add. See Claire at the top still. Whoa, Zoe. Zoe has a winning streak of three correct answers in a row now. Very good, very good, Zoe. I'm pleased about that. Claire's still there at the top. Uh, Malk's come up from nowhere, and so Vicky, Vicky's still there, and Faye's in, in second place. Okay, let's see, let's see what's going next. I can't find my next button. Uh, okay, so which is not a function of the skeletal system? Hematopoiesis, hematoma formation, protection, or storage? Zoe looks perplexed. <laughs> Five. Oh, there we go. Hem Very good. Yeah. All the others are formation. Hematoma formation, it happens uh, in your bone when you get a break, but it's, it's your blood system and, and your, um, your immune system that actually forms the hematoma. Okay, let's see what that's done. Claire, are you still going to be there? Whoa, I'm impressed with Claire, but G's come streaking up into uh, third place. So he's gone down a bit. VV's still there. We're liking this. And so is Faye W. But we've got five players that have got an answer streak of three. Great stuff. Keep it up, guys. Let's see what's next. Okay, so another one. Which type of bone is this? So again, you're looking at the green. Is it a short bone, an irregular bone, a sesamoid bone, or a flat bone? Okay, three, two, one. Boom. Okay, yeah, it's a sesamoid bone. Technically speaking, those who said it was irregular, it depends on who, uh, which is which osteology and which textbook you, you go with, because some people do put a sesamoid into the irregular box, but for the purpose of this quiz, it's not. So you, by the way. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Claire's still there. Oh, Claire's there. Karan's coming up. That's okay. Claire's there. Someone's dropped off the leaderboard, and we still have three players that have got an answer streak of three. 
Okay, let's see what the next one's going to bring us. Again, which type of bone is this? So we've got a woven bone, trabecular bone, cortical bone, or lamella bone. But just think of it with that, that image. Great. Okay. So it's trabecular bone um, in that image. I guess technically it could be woven, but not all of it. It would only be very small pockets of it would be woven. Remember, woven was the, the bone that's put down really, really quickly and it has a disorganized structure. Trabecular is the spongy bone and it's what bears the weight of your, um, of, of your body and your bones. Okay, Claire's still there. Whoa, yes, Karen's coming up. Vivi's still there on the leaderboard, but Zoe, you've dropped off. You need to be quick, quicker. Okay, <laughs> three players have dropped just dropped their answer streak of five. Oh no, that's bad. Okay, let's see, next one. Okay, so up to 10% of the adult bone is made of what? Collagen, minerals, water, or non-collagen proteins? Okay, great stuff. Yeah, it's made up of water. Little bit of a trick one there because non-collagen proteins is 10% of the proteins. Got to pay attention to the question. Let's see what that's done. Let's see if we're going to get clear off the top. Oh, we have. So Karen's come streaking up. Vivi's back up. So is Zoe and Luke. Oh, we'll be pleased about that. Luke's on the leaderboard. I think you guys shouldn't be playing, really. And we've got three players that have got an answer streak of three as well. Okay, let's go for the next one. So, what provides stiffness to bone? So, is it the hollow shafts, the minerals, so the calcium, collagen, or trabecular bone? Remember, we're talking about stiffness here. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, minerals, great stuff, yeah. So the minerals is the stiffness. Collagen actually provides the, the tensile strength and the, and the flexibility. So let's see what that's done to the leaderboard. Vicky, do you reckon you're still on there? Zoe, what do you reckon? Did you get that right? No, no, Vicky's shaking her head. Okay, let's see. So Claire's gone down. Luke's come up. Zoe's there. Beth, Beth, welcome to the leaderboard. Um, and we've had five places. Ramona, nice, is the highest climber there. Okay, let's see what's going on now. So... What type of cells resorb bone? You scientists shouldn't be playing if you ask me. <laughs> and it's pointing to it there, if that helps anybody. Okay, osteoclast, yeah. So, great stuff. Let's see what that's done. Who's on the quick fingers? Karan. Oh, Luke, Beth's come up. Molly's come, come out of nowhere. And Tim is back with an answer streak of three as well. Great stuff. Okay, let's see. So, what type of cells produce bone? Sorry, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, bone lining cells, or osteocytes. Great, osteoblast. Yep, definitely. They produce the bone. Let's see what that is. Okay, so nothing's changed there, uh, but Shelly's back in the game, apparently. Shelly, where have you been? Come on, you should be on top here. That's not on. Uh, okay, let's see. Right, true or false, when you go into space, you lose bone. So true or false? true so it's when you go up into space there's no gravity so gravity actually puts mechanical load on your bone 
just when you're walking around just from actually keeping your bone up um, and so that actually makes your bone um, keep going and so if there's no gravity um, then you actually end up losing using bone that's why when they land and they're in that capsules you know they can't get up because if they actually stood up and, and started walking around they'd probably end up breaking the bones because they have really really fragile bones um, but they actually once they're back down and they've got gravity then they actually recoup it very quickly uh, so that was just to see whether or not your general knowledge is there let's see what's going on with that Karen's on a winning streak Zoe has come right straight up to second place her head has come up from nowhere, Beth's still there, and Karen has the highest answer streak of 10. Very good. Okay, let's see. He gets sacked if he doesn't. How many skeletons would the average person have? One, ten, eight, or four? Okay, two, one, zero, let's go. Yeah, eight. I've gone on that the average person gets to about 80, and if we say that we replace our skeleton once every 10 years, then eight. Okay, let's see. Karan, high street, Zoe's still there, had Malk's come from nowhere, Beth's still on the board. Who dropped off? I have no idea, but we've got three players lost their answer streak as well. Okay, let's see what's going on. 13, next one. What do tumour repressors, P53 and RB1, do to cells? Do they send them into G2, keep them in S phase, stop them going in S phase, or nothing? Great stuff. Excellent. Yes, they stopped them going into S phase. Nice one. They do that G1 to S phase transition. Zoe's come slow, right up there. There she's gone. Three in a row. G is back in the game as well. Mag's still on the board. We've lost Luke. Don't know where Shelly's gone. Where's she gone? Okay, let's see. Next question. Um, okay. Red flag symptoms for primary bone cancer, guys. Come on, you should know this. I know I never covered it, but I'm testing your knowledge. Bone pain that is worse at night, pathological fracture, bone or soft tissue swelling, or all. Great. I like that. So technically the ones who, who'd hit the red, you're right, but actually all of these are red flag symptoms as well of, um, of primary bone cancer. So let's see who's got that right. Zoe's Yes, Joey. Oh, so we've had a little bit of a change in the leaderboard. Zoe has a streak with eight correct answers in a row. You'd want to hope so, really, wouldn't you? What What are you, the research manager? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. So um, I think, let me see what we've got. Yeah, okay. True or false, dinosaurs had primary bone cancer, osteosarcoma. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 2, 1, boom. Excellent, I like that. I hope everyone saw that actual, uh, I think it was in the paper ages ago. Yeah, the first instance of osteosarcoma that's been been uh, was found uh, a couple of years back in a I think it was a, a toe of a of one of one of them dinosaurs that I just actually shown um, so millions of years ago which which is which is we can go into that in, in in another term but it's really interesting so let's see what that has done to the leaderboard is Zoe gonna still be there so he's got a streak of yes he's there phase come out of nowhere Beth's still in third place Hered is in second and Karen's in third Okay, so this next question, you need to be quick on it. That's what's going to change this leaderboard, I think, is who's going to be the quickest on this next question. Are you ready? Are you on? You've you got your thumbs or you've got your mouse hovering? Okay, let's go. So, true or false, this quiz has helped with my learning. Great stuff. Who put false? Who put false? <laughs> I I actually know the, who this is. I can find out who this is. I'm not having that. <laughs> let's see what that's done. If you if you just done that, Zoe, let's see what's going on yeah. there. So here's the podium results. So in third place, 
is Beth with 13 out of 16. Well done, Beth. Second place is Hey Red with 14. And then with 15 out of 16 is Zoe. <laughs> well done, Zoe. Woohoo. <laughs> Runners up is Faye and uh, Molly. So, guys, don't log out yet because there is actually, you should now see on your screen, you should see a bit of feedback. So, it'd be great if you could actually just click that in and see whether or not, uh, whether you enjoyed it, whether it helped you or, or, or anything like that. So, um, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was a bit of fun. I'm, I'm actually really pleased with the answers, actually, because it looked like, you know, the vast majority of you were paying attention to what I said. Um, <laughs> so thanks a lot for that. That was great. Thanks, Ali. <laughs> I think you've got a bit of an, a secret second life as maybe a, a commentator just waiting to get out. <laughs> you, you kind of missed your calling a little bit. You took to that very naturally. Um, okay, everyone. So thank you ever so much for joining us. We hope you liked the quiz at the end as well. Um, just to reiterate what I said earlier, if you do have any questions, please do send them to us afterwards. We will absolutely come back to you on them as much as we can. Um, the next few bite size research sessions are quite specific. So the next one is about immune based treatments and Ewing sarcoma. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, the one after that is specifically around osteosarcoma and our work to develop methotrexate into a, a pro drug to make it kinder as a treatment. And then we've got some exciting updates on chondrosarcoma the week after that and our chordoma research the week after that. So uh, we'd love to see you back again. Um, as always, what we'll do is we'll share the details of the presentation and a link to watch it back if you like via an um, email probably on Monday with details for joining next Friday. So uh, thank you all. If you do have any feedback or any suggestions for future uh, sessions, please do send it to us. Okay. Thank you and goodbye. Have a good weekend.